who hasn't had a parent say, stop texting or stop checking your phone? My parents were no different and I used to tune them out just like most of you. However, my parents didn't give in and my phone privileges were often revoked. It turns out by taking my phone away, they did me a favor. I am no longer obsessed with my phone because usually all I am missing out on is a lot of drama. Now I have plenty of free time to spend on my favorite subject, science. I use the time to learn about science, compete in science competitions, or do community service related to science. I have been asked to share with you some of the highlights of what I have tried in my newfound spare time, as well as how it went. Because if I can do it, so can you. I discovered my passion for science in seventh grade. Like many of you, I had a science teacher announce that I had to do a mandatory science project. My reaction was no different than yours. <sighs> but this was no ordinary science project. It lasted four months, and the best projects were submitted to a national competition. My experiment was to determine how to stop white-tailed deer from eating shrubs and trees around houses like my own. I discovered that the best way to do that is to coat your plants with a mixture whose main ingredient is rotten eggs. <laughs> really? Deterring deer is important in the Pittsburgh area where I'm from because we have one of the highest white-tailed deer populations in the country. Before I knew it, I had spent over 50 hours on the project and it was being submitted to the competition. Even more surprising, the judges liked it and I won the award for my grade. My findings were published in several newspapers, which allowed my results to be shared with others. It was an aha moment. I realized I liked science and that I might have something to offer my community, as well as the animals that call it home. Next, I tackled saving eastern box turtles from becoming endangered for my Girl Scout Silver Award, since their population is steadily declining. There are few eastern box turtles left, because people take them out of nature and keep them as pets. I rehabilitated a turtle habitat that the local naturalist uses to run a turtle dating service. Turtles cannot see far, and they cannot smell, so it is hard for them to find each other. For example, if you were to place a cardboard divider between two turtles, they would not know there is a turtle on the other side. So the dating service is necessary. Along the way, I met professors who have dedicated their lives to studying turtles. I created web content to focus attention on the problem, and I earned a science award as well. Not only did I improve a turtle habitat, but I thought, hey, I may be able to improve human habitats too. Indoor radon is in about half of Pittsburgh homes, and if it is not vented, it can lead to lung cancer. My own home has a higher radon level which we mitigate, and since my concrete basement has cracks in the floor, I wondered if they were causing the problem. I tested homes throughout Pittsburgh, and it turns out that the cracks are not the problem, the age of the home is. Newer buildings are more airtight and they trap radon in the house. Not only did my experiment let one homeowner know he had a high level of radon in his home, but I was fortunate to earn three awards at a science contest. I did not come up with all of my research ideas on my own. My next project was to learn about the Asian jumping worm. Who would think to study that? Well, the naturalist at my local park did, and she asked me to help her. The Asian jumping worm is an invasive worm that causes more damage to hardwood forests than other worms due to its size, metabolism, reproductive rate, and density. And yes, it really does jump. At first, I was skeptical but I found many of them in my local park and was able to document how they were harming the trees. I was determined to do something about the worms, but once they're in the ground, you cannot get them back out. I knew that fishermen use worms as bait when they fish at the park's lake and release the remaining ones when they are done. 
So I created signs for the park, asking fishermen to stop dumping their bait. I also received media coverage, which helped me spread the word. This project, in addition to creating field guides for the county's Young Naturalist program, helped me earn a Gold Presidential Volunteer Service Award, which represents over 100 hours of service. Another invasive species that I studied was the zebra mussel. After seeing billboards about zebra mussels along a local highway, I made plans to study how they are damaging boats and docks. I ran an experiment testing different ways of deterring the razor-sharp mussels from adhering to docks in Conneaut Lake, which is just north of Pittsburgh. It was similar to my deer experiment, except underwater. I earned awards in two competitions, but what was really exciting was that my research was requested by the Pennsylvania Fish and Boat Commission. Also, I had the opportunity to work with professors from nearby colleges and received support from a chemist who works with the United States sailing team. Working with people and organizations that I would otherwise never come into contact with is a great benefit of these projects. And another group that I worked with was the world famous Phipps Conservatory. Last summer, I planted five educational gardens in a wheelchair accessible area in my local park with support of donors such as Phipps. The gardens teach residents about perennial plants that are deer resistant and drought resistant, as well as plants that attract bees and butterflies or are edible. I learned valuable project management skills, such as writing proposals, budgeting, and managing a timeline. After I finished my 80 hours of service, I earned a Girl Scout Gold Award, the highest award the Girl Scouts offer. After working with smaller plants, I thought bigger. How about a forest? The topic of forest bathing caught my attention after reading about it in a scientific magazine. The concept originated in Japan, where they have proven that the natural volatile oils given off by trees have amazing benefits. Spending time under trees can improve mood, reduce stress and its related diseases, and even improve a body's ability to fight cancer. I became so excited about sharing this information with others that I told reporters and the local naturalist. The naturalist is offering countywide forest bathing classes this summer, and I will assist in teaching them. I earned a second gold presidential volunteer service award for this program. In case you were wondering, not all of my scientific endeavors have been successful. For example, I studied water reuse with the help of the president of a local company and immunotherapy with the help of a local doctor. All I can say is that I learned a lot and it may pay off in the future. There are so many options to explore, it will be hard to decide what to try next. As you can see, in the last four years, I have worked with mentors who have given me remarkable opportunities to learn, compete, and give back. Your passion may lie in a different direction than science, but if you put your phone away for a while, you will see that your options are virtually limitless. You will grow as a person, and you can give back to your community. If your phone is a permanent accessory, then you are missing out on your true calling. Thank you.